Hello there, welcome to MNB World's talk show's brand new episode. Well, today we have invited a very hardworking girl who has a very a rare profession in Mongolia. Well, she's a sports manager and international volleyball referee. Well, this beautiful lady who's sitting beside me is Miss Nomenzol Hoyuk. Oh, thank you for having me. You had worked in banking sector, especially at Ham Bank, for five years, and all of a sudden you went to Korea, study sports management. So what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, totally two different fields, right? Yeah, <clears throat> it basically starts from the volunteer work and a sports event. Mm -hmm. So while I working in Ham Bank and as sort a of relationship manager, mm -hmm. I used to do the volunteer work and uh, weather and. Rotary in sports. Mm -hmm. In 2015, it was in volleyball and um, Eastern Journal Volleyball Men's Championship. Okay. I work as a volunteer, mm -hmm. then working with the referee delegates. Then I, uh, as observe, Mongolia doesn't have an international referee at the time. At the time, in yeah. 2015. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Then I like. I uh, wonder why we don't have because like I do have like some little pa uh, ambitions, you know, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, I, I work with the international referee at that time. Mm -hmm. Then I like decided to go international volleyball referee. Mm -hmm. Then while I work in international referees and I also assume and observe there's uh, so many like opportunities to work in the sports sector in Mongolia, mm -hmm. but they're due to the limited specialist. So it's like big problem. Then, mm -hmm. also at the time, I like pursuing to study in master school in abroad. Mm -hmm. Then I decided just follow my passion. Then it's follow your passion. Yeah. So your passion is in sports. Was in the sports. Yeah. I then mean, it still is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I decided to go in uh, sports, ma mm -hmm. sports and master degree. Then mm -hmm. I found the several sports uh, management programs, mm -hmm. but then. And so the National University, you know, providing like p full package, you know, who admitted in s at this program. Then, mm -hmm. luckily, I admitted and I studied there. Mm -hmm. So, did you get scholarship there? Yeah, I got that. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good for us Mongolians, huh? Yeah. Especially athletes. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, uh, we know from our study here mm -hmm. that uh, you started playing volleyball mm. when you were 13 years old. Yes. Now, I mean, when you were 13 years old, you started playing in the National League, Yes, right? yes. Uh, so sports was like a big part of your life uh, uh, until today. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been a big part of my life since I was eight years old. I, I started playing volleyball when I was an eight years old. Which eight is, years old? Uh, which is my uh, second grade of high life. Yeah, second second grade. Uh, secondary mm -hmm. school, right? Mm -hmm. Then and I just like, because I live in Baganur, you know, and mm -hmm. just far away in Ulaanbaatar, that mm -hmm. there is like just, oh, we have going school and mm -hmm. having training. That's all my like fully routine of my life, you know. Mm -hmm. Then I just spend the, like, Many times in sports hall, doing my training, and luckily I got a Japanese coach at the time. When you were eight years old? Yeah. At uh, your school? Nine years old. Nine, yeah. nine years old, yeah. okay. At the, and Baganur having mm -hmm. coach from in Japanese. Oh, then wow. He, yeah, he taught like people like volleyball, you know, mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. very like advanced level. Mm -hmm. Then and I also have a Mongolian coach as well, whose mm -hmm. name is Yildin Chulun, mm -hmm. then also Tamar. Then I had a very uh, intensive training uh, two times uh, a day sometimes and mm -hmm. five, th five times a week. So you started playing in the National League when you were 13 years old. I mean, how did it start? What was the experience? Yeah, it was like very lucky opportunity that I received from Noyen Club. Mm -hmm. I play in uh, Noyen Club women's team, which is like people know mm, Kirlin in Bayerma, who got mm -hmm. the mo uh, first the silver medal from the an, uh, Asian Women's Championship. They mm -hmm. invited me to the play with them as a oh. like player so uh -huh. when I was in 30 years old. Then they gives me this opportunity to imp improve my performance. Yes, that it was. Yeah. But 13 years old is comparatively a little kid. 
you know what? And you're playing in National League. Was it, I mean, allowed legally? <laughs> I mean, was there anything? Yeah, it's allowed because I was a high like this now. <laughs> <laughs> so you never grew <laughs> since 13 years of age? Yeah. Oh, wow. Then, what I, was, happened? then I was more like light, I was more faster, you know, uh -huh. so I used to play in very like, yeah. Uh, fast. So you were tall <laughs> like this <laughs> when you were 13 years old? Yeah, they're the, the team that especially volleyball needs, mm -hmm. like player in high. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the tall, tall. But people, I wasn't right? like, uh, not high like others, but I'm high at the time. <laughs> By the time, right? Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, as a tradition, we have to introduce you, mm -hmm. introduce you in papers. I mean, I mean, like, like your CV mm -hmm. and photos. So. Mm -hmm. Let's show to our audience first and then proceed, yes? Okay. All right. Very rich resume indeed. Well, uh, you studied in Korea. Yes. South Korea in sports management, Seoul University, right? Seoul National. Seoul National University. <coughs> what did you uh, What did you learn from Korea, like in in, in sports management, sports field, mm. how they train their athletes, compared to Mongolia? What yeah. kind of advantage they have? You know, what kind of advantage we have? Let's mm. talk about that. Yes, the, the program that I study, it name is Dream Together Masters. Mm -hmm. So especially um, um, they se selected students from developing countries. Mm -hmm. So then at that time, the 25 countries comes from 27 students. Mm -hmm. Then two students from Mongolia at that time were very lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they provided seven sev and 17 different models, sports models, invited uh, 32 uh, professors from all around the world. So the program is international program itself. Yeah, I so see. from Australia, in UK, mm -hmm. in America, in mm -hmm. Europe, you know, mm -hmm. like and all the lecturers and teachers are from international. different international different the experts of the uh, wow. fields, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. the who is expert in Olympic games, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. sport governance? They mm -hmm. just invited them as a professor. Mm -hmm. So they also provided to the extracurricular events. So having like field trip in professional sports event, mm -hmm. volleyball and basketball. And we were very, very lucky at the time held, Korea held Winter Olympic Games, Pyeongchang 2018. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. worked there as a researcher, as an intern. Mm -hmm. Then we submitted to the research work to the government about po for post facility management mm -hmm. under the guidance of our director. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they just provided full the opportunity to what I would like develop my mm -hmm. like knowledge in, in terms of sports management. That that gives like so many opportunity to like work in a national Olympic center, no a comedy and mm -hmm. national athlete center, science center, then also like every like professional events. So you you are mentioning science. Mm. I mean, I don't know. It's just my my. Mm like poor understanding in sports. I mean, how does re uh, science relate to sports? I mean, we don't have that kind of culture in Mongolia, do we? E Yet? We, we have, but not such developed like others, you know. Yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. we do have a center, but I haven't like... We do have center? Yeah. Science center for sports? Uh, sport, like yeah. Like committees, etc. Mm, uh -huh. mm. Under the uh, Sport Authority Center, Implementation Agency, something. Yeah. So you are learning... Uh, mm -hmm from international mm. practices and experiences mm. and when, when you came back to Mongolia trying to implement the international uh, experiences, you know, know-hows, mm. what are the challenges to you? So the challenges are actually comes from the working environment. Because working environment. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we still have like working on sports for all mm -hmm. but we doesn't have like the, um, enough like facilities, equipment. Mm -hmm. Then also we doesn't have like proper policy as well mm -hmm. to develop in our youth athletes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. The w and also, and the coaches want to be like 
they have very big passion, but we don't have limited the financial, you know, Resource, resources. Okay. Then, yeah. This okay. All okay. So uh, okay, we we have problem in that kind of challenges. Yeah. Also. But what kind of advantage do we have? So we now now mm -hmm. you are meeting with all these international people, practitioners, uh, experts, right? Mm -hmm. and then, when you see Mongolia, we have to have something mm. that has an advantage. Yeah. Shouldn't well, we? Um, yeah. The, you know what? The our po our country is the young, have like very young. You know. Mm -hmm. the, out of, out of 17 or 60 percent of the population is under 35 years old. Mm -hmm. So it means like we do have many young athletes who have sports and passion, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is our advantage. They have very like big passion comparing with others. Mm -hmm. And uh, develop, developed countries, especially from Korea or Japan, they provide uh, like very intensive training, but they don't have like, you know, that's such kind of passion comparing with Mongolian young ah, people. Yeah. So, so mm. our our young athletes, young people are mm. passionate about sports. Yeah, very passionate. There's true passion. You're really so passionate. So once they advantage. find like you know, their like, pure like p passion, so it's just a following like non-stop, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. As long as there's there's the facilities and the supports mm. in right places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you are an international volleyball referee. Mm. The referee is very important in, in, in any match, right? Yeah. They decide who who is to win. Oh, so we not <laughs> decide who is to win. It's, it's, it's a psychologi <laughs> and psychologically very um, um, stressful job I take from mm. my side. Uh, how do you prepare yourself? Uh, how do you, how does referee train himself or herself? Yeah, it's interesting to our audience. To yeah. me, even. so referee, we are. Uh, as a referee, so I'm mm -hmm. preparing uh, for my international match mm -hmm. as a physically and mentally. Physically? And physically, uh, we have to be like, you know, <laughs> very like, I uh, uh, have to say, um, looks like very like, people respectful, you know, uh -huh. like keeping my feet and also be very confident. It confidence mm -hmm. comes from my everything, you know, mm -hmm. preparation. Mm -hmm. So, and. So uh, referees. Mm -hmm. They even have physical training. Yeah, we um, mm. top referees used to do and um, training in every day, especially who you know, we playing in referee in Olympic Games. So oh, yeah. yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought referees would f like physically train themselves. Yeah. Okay. Now, now I'm, I get it. Like they have to look fit and you know. Yeah. Look competent, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then. No, physically and mentally, and we are prepared. Mentally, it's like, uh, should we have very calm, you know, mm -hmm. like very confident and very like concentrated and during the match. Because once I uh, going to the match and the court, so I standing in the court and more or less in two three, hour, three hours, uh -huh. and uh, the people watch the more or less in five or six thousand people in the, on the court in mm -hmm. hall mm -hmm. and two teams playing the ones have makes a like mistake so it's like comes from like makes me nervous right yeah of course so I, yes. that's that's the thing so i have to be keep calm comes from like preparation mental preparation watching the videos mm -hmm. olympic game videos world game mm -hmm. championship nations league what, what else yeah Watching the videos a lot, yeah. You have to watch the videos a lot, like yeah. what kind of mistakes happen, mm. failures happen. Yeah. Mm. It is very important and very precise job, I believe. But in the end, you have to trust your own gut, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <So I> mean, <laughs> uh, but, and, you know, uh, I don't know why. It's most important things like whistling in international game is like presentation of the inter international referee before the match. Uh -huh. Then like it comes, uh, like say like, uh, the second referee or first referee in Nami and from Mongolia is most important thing that I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> th there's your passion there, but um, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So to become an international referee in any sports, so you mm -hmm. have to take take test. Yeah, test. test. Yeah, er and every single mm -hmm. competition took took take no, required to take test and writing text. Ah. Then also the test alcohol tests and. Every single competition. Every single competition. Every single it. match. Every single before the match. Even match. Ah. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So, in, for example, in last year in 2018, Jakarta Asian Games, it took mm. so tw three weeks. Mm -hmm. 
so intensive. Every day almost got the nomination. Maybe they, we do have rest day, but very rare. Mm -hmm. Then at least one or two matches a day, very intensive and very competitive. Mm -hmm. Then they took an alcohol test and writing test. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then also like uh, people like observe me in every single side, you know, so mm -hmm. I have to be a very neutral referee, oh, you know. Wow, that's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when we watch sports, mm -hmm. we, oh, I mean, mostly see the players, like mm -hmm. the, the athletes, but I never thought from that referee perspective. I mean, we see the coaches from the other, the both sides, but not the referees. Wow, interesting. Yeah. So much happening there. Yeah, <laughs> behind those yeah, it's, it's <laughs> so really competitive. Mm -hmm. hard, it's very hard to compete with uh, developed country referees mm -hmm. because they have a very competitive national league. Mm -hmm. So they're just prepared fully enough. Mm -hmm. so, so are you the only one international volleyball referee? Oh, uh, there's a one more. One more? Yeah. Uh, they, he just qualified last August. He? Mm. Last August. So. Mm. Mongolia has two now. Yeah, after 14 years. So af years. After 14 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, as you know, we have uh, taken uh, some video while you uh, are doing your job. So let's show to our audience, shall we? Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I usually is uh, working on my this private room. It's located in ICC. Name is Club Co-working Space. It's the first Mongolian co-working space in 2016. Since 2016, so yes, I do have like um, two, three offices near around like Special Olympics and another works in near around like Tenthru Lambata. But I used to sit here and working on my own projects. So recently I working on my sports management company. Uh, there is a two projects. One of the athlete leadership program for who study in university and besides doing their sports work. I mean like sports league, their sports own competition training. So they're prepare, designing new program for the college student athletes then like developing their personality. I working on a several projects at the same time. So um, actually, and I do, uh, we, I'm setting my meetings in the morning. Depends on their people agenda. So actually I try to put it on appointment in the morning. Then in the evening around, I work in until the night. So I'm like night person, I work in, then yeah, more creative and efficient. Yeah, so this office like gives me like very uh, creative atmosphere because I, I usually like creating contents, sports contents and like fundraising and money. This all like comes from like, you know, reading and like meditating and like, talking with like brainstorming. The, this atmosphere is, gives me this all of like everything. So the conditions. So here, yeah, I usually work in here in the evening, so which is like sitting my, myself and the concentrating and meditating, like everything. Wow, it's very interesting. You get to watch all these competitions and uh, make decisions too. It's, yes. It, it is uh, lots of pressure. Yes, it is. Pressure, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, uh, on the side, you are also working as a sports director at Special uh, Olympics Committee of Mongolia, yeah. right? Yes. And so, so our yeah. athletes who has uh, ID, intellectual disability, are very successful these days. So how are you guys working and how are you guys supporting these athletes? Yes, uh, Special Olympics Mongolia, Special Olympics itself, like mm -hmm. providing year-round sports training to people with intellectual disability. Mm -hmm. So Special Olympics Mongolia established 2003 mm -hmm. Yes, so we now have in 2,500 athletes, more than 100 couches. Yeah. Oh wait, 2,000? 500, barely, yeah. 2,500 athletes, athletes in Mongolia? Mongolia. Really? So because why? Because uh, the high school with the special needs, <coughs> so have students, they're all very active in sports. Mm -hmm. 
Then we are on the western side of Mongolia, which is in Bayulgin, Zaohan, Os, Hovsko. Mm -hmm. They're very like active in the uh, sports ar uh, activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why. So far, we do have athletes around 2,500 mm -hmm. and coaches around 100. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, uh, I mean, to me, the interesting part is to work with these athletes, supporting these athletes, having their focus on to, I mean, you know, digging, I mean, letting these passion for sports mm. out from these athletes. Mm. I mean, how do you guys work? Mm. I'm interested in the process. Like yeah, you know what, the most difficult things is finding athletes, new athletes, because mm -hmm. the people have uh, very limited information about like uh, people with um, intellectual disability. Mm -hmm. That's why the most of people like height, or just like, like I, I won't say hide, but hiding their people, their relatives and kids and family and at uh -huh, home. Uh -huh. So finding them, providing sports training, mm -hmm. they help to discover new person, like you know, mm -hmm. their ability, strengths and success through the sports mm -hmm. is our goal, I mean our purpose. Then Which is really hard work, I mean. Yeah, but it's very, Nice work. Mm -hmm. So when I'm with my athletes, I'm just like unconditionally like very happy with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so because they're like really funny, very nice, you know. Mm -hmm. Then once they find their like own sports, mm -hmm. they do training very hard, very consistent. Mm -hmm. Then like they it the sports helps them to like uh, improving their communication. Mm -hmm. Then it's also uh, influenced to the society to be mm -hmm. like more like you know positive. Mm -hmm. Then and also we work and you know simply we work uh, like providing sports training and mm -hmm. also anti discrimination discrimination against mm -hmm. with the uh, people with this uh, intellectual disability. Mm -hmm. yeah. And 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 when these people go into sports, mm -hmm. they they are gaining a community for themselves as well, yeah, right? I yeah. mean, I mean friends. The mm. instead of hiding, you know, staying yeah, at home. Yeah, so we just like. Promoting inclusive society, you mm -hmm. know, we need more inclusion, mm -hmm. people, this kind of people, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, sports, uh, I mean, training uh, uh, these athletes, mm -hmm. it needs lots of financial support, financial budget, right? Yeah, it's so more uh -huh. needs uh -huh. than uh -huh. sports. Do we have yeah. many people or companies, organizations, mm -hmm. support the Special Olympics Committee? Yeah, we do have, we do have, because last mm -hmm. year we went to uh, a win uh, summer world game, Abu Dhabi, mm -hmm. I think, uh, you guys know that, mm -hmm. that we got the medals from, <coughs> 19 athletes got medals, 27 athletes went there, mm -hmm. then the 19 athletes uh, got the medals. 19 athletes got medals, yeah. wow, that's, yeah. that's a success. Yes, mm -hmm. so... Uh, we had a an, we organized a fundraising event and charity events. Mm -hmm. So so many and companies helps them as much as they can. You know, mm -hmm. then the companies are very welcome to Special Olympics. Mm -hmm. To they ready to help with people with intellectual disability. But we need more consistent policy to, you know, in supporting our athletes mm -hmm. and develop their skills and performance as well. <laughs>
emotion like in, during the match. So it's most important things. In the next, um, our performance have to be very clear, and it gives the people to like more confident. And so this year, so I nominated three uh, three international competition in Asian cha Asian championship. So I'm waiting for my selection. Uh, it will be an open up and uh, and coming May. So if I have a chance, I can go and under 17 in you no know, in 19 girls Asian championship in China. So while I running, I used to watch the volleyball match, especially in the 5VB World Championship and Olympic Games and qualifications. So uh, my role model, so before I go and a referee, professional referee, so I admiring a referee from Korea, Kim Jong um, Kim Jong Hee. She's the only one woman referee from Asia and Olympic Games and last last. Real Olympic game. She is a role model of me. So, and luckily, I met her in, in Korea when I studied in Seoul National University. Then, and she taught me like many things and her tactics. And then, like being referees, have to be very honest, and then also uh, very you know, confident, and then also be like and have to be controlling like emotional uh, intelligence. So, what do you think about marriage? I mean, what kind of family do you fantasize for yourself? Family, what I want to fantasize. I fantasize uh, my future family as my current family, you know, mm -hmm. my, my parents, mm -hmm. my siblings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they start from zero. Mm -hmm. Now they have like achieved so many things and together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, family itself, like being together, making accomplishment and together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like with love, yeah. With, with, with love? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you think marriage is something that you plan or, I mean, it just, it just comes naturally? How about I like believe it mm -hmm. comes naturally. So what kind of future do you want for yourself and mm -hmm. what kind of future do you dream mm -hmm. from Mongolia? Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So first, uh, I... Try to be precise. Precise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, instead of me and my future, I do have a passion and dream in working in Olympic Games as an organizer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not from a National Olympic Committee, you know, mm -hmm. as a like main organizer in mega events in sports. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Mongolia, I do believe <coughs> there is a bright future in Mongo um, sports side because we do have many talents. Mm -hmm. So we, if, if we provide smart enough st structure and policy, mm -hmm. so we can prepare many, many at, uh, elite athletes and mm -hmm. we can prepare many, many Olympic medalists. Mm -hmm. Then promoting sports mm -hmm. to the young, you know, then preparing them mm -hmm. like very strong. Mm -hmm. What's the meaning of a country mm -hmm. having so many Olympic medalists, mm -hmm. in your opinion? So having uh, many s Olympic medalists is uh, making the pride, the nation pride, you know. Mm. Nation pride is a comes from like uh, healthy people and, mm. and also training in like healthy people and strong and young. From people. healthy competition. Yeah, healthy right? community. Healthy community, healthy competition. Yeah. Having a great pride. Yeah. In national identity. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for receiving our invitation and coming here and, and uh, have a really interesting conversation. I mean, there are so many information that I did not know before. Thank you. I wish you good health and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good luck to you. <laughs> yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Miss Nerman Zolt Hoyuk, who is International Volleyball Referee and Sports Manager. I hope you enjoyed our conversation. 
We will see you with our next episode next week. Until then, goodbye. Thank you.